Hey guys, Bowie here, and this is Things I've Learned with Miracle Storm in 719. Before I start this video, I just want to share something that sucks when it comes to YouTube. If you don't care about this, if you just care about the Dota, you can jump to this time. But if you enjoy my videos and content, please hear me out. YouTube is a great place. I started my videos here, and I owe all I have to you guys and this platform. That being said, YouTube is supposed to be addictive. It's supposed to hook you up so that you want new videos every day. And when I don't post those videos for a while, well, YouTube will find you another YouTuber to get hooked on. If my last Miracle Antimage video was posted two months ago when I was uploading constantly, it would have maybe 40k views, but it has less than half. I know a lot of you are mad or sad or both that I'm not uploading daily, but at the same time, do you see how non-reliable it is? If I want to live off of esports, but have to literally work every single day and taking a month off means reducing my income in 50%. I cannot agree this looks like an awesome deal, especially for content like me that needs to be well thought out. I can't just compilate a bunch of videos, put some googly eyes in the thumbnail and promise free arcanas. I'm not here to complain though, I'm here to explain why I want to be involved in casting. It's just another source of income that allows me to live a healthier lifestyle. That's also why I'm streaming. Anyways, my point here is sorry for less videos and if you like them, regardless, make sure to ring the bell, follow me or sub on Twitch and Twitter because I'm excited with my future but also a little fearful with how YouTube algorithm works. This is a hero that in my opinion is quite strong right now and although struggles against a bunch of matchups in lane, also has a lot of advantages later on. Heroes like Zeus and Lina get destroyed by Storm as the game unfolds. The first thing to talk about in this game is the early warding. Placing a ward at the start of the game like this is much more value for you. High MMR players will always click the enemy mid as soon as they meet each other in lane, which makes warding as you block kind of dangerous. It might also allow you to spot supports coming from more rotations or going toward at the start, so that's very valuable. Pay attention how Miracle instantly clicks Lina here. As I said, Storm struggles against Lina, so the first play Miracle goes for is securing the range creep at the start, so that he can last hit the melee creeps later by drawing aggro. This was a common play at TI, glyphing and punishing plays like this, but with the changes to the glyph cooldown, you're more than welcome to try it out, or else Lina will get most of the range creep denies later. That being said, you can see how Miracle got punished in the old patch. Another thing to mention is how Miracle fares region. He has the pull tangles, he gets three tangles, and then he gets a salve as he takes more damage. This is like many other star matchups, one that you will jungle eventually, but you want to be at least level four or five to go for it, or else it's not very mana efficient, meaning that you need to get a lot of region earlier to survive. Miracle cannot get close to the range CS in this state, so note how he draws aggro here to CS some of the melee ones. A lot of people in situations like this just completely get out of the lane and wait for the lane to push. And if you do, the enemy mid will be 100% level 2 and you will not. By constantly drawing aggro here, you reduce the power of the creep wave and the chances of him diving you. He also gets level 2 as he draws aggro, which puts him in a better position with more stats and with more abilities. So if so if the Lina dies Miracle, maybe he can actually get a counter. A lot of people, when they are level 3 with Storm, don't know which skill is better in lane. Usually against melee heroes, the remnant is just easier and more efficient damage since it scales better. But against ranged heroes, it might give you the chance to get solo kills before level 6. Pay attention to Miracle after he responds here. Two range creeps waiting to be farmed, and while he knows he'll get severely punished, he also understands that it is worth it. He just wants to get levels as fast as possible so he can kill the Lina later down the line. One important thing to note is that he starts walking as Lina CS, and maybe you think this is just coincidence. But this means that the LSA will hit after he uses the Remnant. In fact, if the Lina tries to get greedy and use the LSA, she will also take the Remnant damage. Not only Sumail gets the CS, he gets the other one, and eventually he also kills Lina. If we go back a little bit, not only Miracle knew about the Fairy Fire because right at the beginning of the game he clicked the Lina, he also only lands one Remnant in the Lina. If he learned Remnant level 2, he would deal extra 40 damage from leveling that skill, but he landed 4 right clicks with the passive after using his skills, which means he would be losing 80 damage, showing that the skill he learned actually changed the outcome of that kill. Even though Miracle got that kill and his bottle is on the way, the matchup is still very hard, especially when Lina comes back with full mana and HP. Miracle's initial Ward gave vision from the top rune, and Lina never got a rune, so he knows there's one bottom. Level 4 is still a bad level to jungle, but thanks to the illusion rune, Miracle can farm the camps without losing much HP. But more important than that, he goes for a double stack play as he already sets up for a top rune. A lot of the times, the enemy mid will keep the lane static so that you cannot CS and get reliable experience there. And while that's a good play, it also allows Miracle as a storm to make use of the map without worrying about his tower. Also, worth noting that he gets a clarity going and then he fares another one. 
Eventually, Lina starts pushing the mid tower, and as a storm in this situation, it's very important that you ask for a support to draw aggro on the tower for you. Not only he will benefit in levels, in case he dies, it's way better for your team than you as a level 5 storm awkwardly trying to defend against the Lina and die. Thanks to the way he used the jungle, and also thanks to him playing aggressive to get his early level 4, Miracle gets level 6 as a storm, 5 minutes in, while jungling. This is impressive, even though it doesn't sound like it. Jungle doesn't give you experience at all. As I said, even though Storm struggles in lane, he's a great matchup versus the Lina since she hates those gap closers, and with the level 6, he can definitely kill her. Lina is having a good lane though, so note how he asks the Wyvern to bait for him. But the important part is not the kill itself, but when Miracle jumps. He could have jumped as soon as the slow lands, but he waits for Lina's animation against Wyvern. Knowing that Lina committed the animation allows Miracle to jump right behind the Lina, meaning that he can also land the Remnant even without having the W. Even more important, she would have to turn to LSA, giving him time to dodge it. Just perfect play, very easy. Miracle finds an Invis rune and he goes for the same target. Note how he zips very shortly so that he lands behind the Lina and she has to turn to LSA. In this very particular case, since Miracle was so close to the Lina, she can actually cast it on top of herself and land the spell barely. Nicely done by her, but even then, Miracle can get the kill. He knows Lina just TP'd from the last death, so this line TP will be a long one and he's fine. Nowadays, the Storm item and talent build is very fixed. Threads into Kaya is the core build 95% of the time, unless you're playing from behind against some crazy silences and you need a new scepter. After Kaya, Bloodstone or Orchid are good choices. With the introduction of the level 15 HP talent, you can go Orchid without feeling super squishy, especially now that Kaya makes you more reliable and stronger, so you don't miss the Bloodstone mana region as much. In this game in particular, there's also a bunch of instant cast point skills that make your solo kills quite hard. Echo, Ghost Shroud, Hex, Trolls, Axis, so having your Orchid makes your life easier for sure. Kaya also makes plays like this very easy. You obviously need to have a good grasp on the speed of which ball lightning goes, and thanks to already being level 12 and having that region, this is an easy kill. Lena was showing mid and macro top, so it's unlikely that this play gets punished. One thing we did not talk about is using your passive charges optimally. Miracle pops his haste room to help a fight bottom when suddenly Necrophos was alone mid. Not only Miracle is 5 levels ahead of the Necrophos, he has vision of those heroes fighting bottom, so he feels safe going for the play. He zips very aggressively, and since the Necro doesn't back, Look how he never pops the Remnant, because the Necro would be able to dodge it. When he does pop the Remnant, he makes sure to attack without committing any other skills, so that every ounce of mana spent also comes with more damage since the passive is always proccing. The most important part of this skill, though, is how Miracle keeps abusing Necrophos turn rate. If you pay attention, Reaper's Side was available for how the entire time, yet Miracle never gets ulted. Let's go back a little bit. As Gold Shroud ends, he zips behind Necrophos, and as he turns around to ult, Miracle zips to the opposite direction where he was turning to. As he repeats, Miracle zips behind him. Then knowing that Lion was TPing, he zips to the fog and away from the tower so that he doesn't get hexed. He then finishes Necro off, and as he runs away, he just ball lightnings once to dodge all of these projectiles following him. He doesn't get more crisp than this. We see him abusing turn rates again here. Thanks to the Invis rune, he kills Lion right at the start of the fight, but look how Miracle actually fights 1 versus 4 against Raiden. As the Winter's Curse ends, you can see that although he zipped all the way to the front of the Lina, he walks behind her. Lina's first reaction is to turn to LSA, but as she turns, he already zips forward. Not only getting Vision to attack, he can easily dodge the animation later. Also dodging Fissure and buying even more time where Lina cannot stun and actually cannot do anything. Radiant really wants to punish Dire since there's no Winter's Curse or Global, but look how Miracle uses his support's Vision by hiding in the trees, getting more mana, and engaging on Lion again. Miracle never rushes, he doesn't suicide knowing that he has Aegis, he just makes use of his insane mana region and clear advantage in this fight to get kills out of his other allies being low HP. He knows that there's no Ghost Shroud and no Echo, so he can go for the Shaker pretty much getting a double Rampage. As of always guys, thanks for watching, if you like this video, make sure to like, make sure to comment because that's the only way I can know if you're actually enjoying what I'm putting out, and you know, YouTube sucks, so any help is appreciated. If you want some memes, if you want to know what I'm doing with my life, Twitter is the place to go, 
if you want to see me cast, if you want to see me play, if you want to support me, follow or sub to me on Twitch. As I said, I'm gonna be in Berlin for the close qualifiers of ESL Hamburg in the Join Dota Elite Studio. So if you want to know more about that, follow me on Instagram so you can, you know, just see some pictures and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. Sorry for the rain at the start. I know it's annoying, but at the same time, I just felt like talking about it. Thanks again, guys. Bye.